All right, it's right at 1.30. We'll go ahead and get started. How are we all doing today? Okay, I'll take that as y'all are all doing great. So my name is Hannah Starnes. I am the Group Fitness Student Supervisor at Texas Tech University Rec Sports. And today we will be talking about social media, kind of the basics of social media, why it's important in your um, program, as well as kind of some tips and tricks to get you started. There we go. All right, so a little bit about me. So like I said, I'm a student at Texas Tech University. I am a senior nutritional sciences and dietetics student. So I'm studying to be a registered dietitian. I am an ACE certified group fitness instructor, as well as a NASM certified um, personal trainer. I have been teaching group fitness classes for two and a half years, and I've been the group fitness student supervisor for two years. And I also currently teach our AFA group fitness instructor course. So I put a little picture of me in the corner there. I'm assuming I'm about this big on your screen, so you at least kind of know what I look like. So a few learning outcomes. So first we're gonna talk about what social media is. And then, like I said, the importance of social media in your program and how it can help benefit your program, as well as um, a few apps to use and kind of some basics to creating posts. So what is social media? So social media is any app or website that allows users to create and share content or participate in social networking. So some of the top ones are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and LinkedIn, but this includes apps that like where you share your workout data, you are able to message, stuff like that. So currently the top three social media sites worldwide are Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. So Facebook has 2.23 billion users monthly, and YouTube has 1.9 billion users monthly, and Instagram has 1 billion. So as you can see, um, there's a huge platform for this, and a ton of people are using it. Some other top sites are Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Tumblr, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, and Pinterest. And the list could probably go on forever because there are a ton of them. So daily usage. So in the US, 69% of people who have a Facebook account check their Facebook daily. And 37% of people who have an Instagram account check their Instagram daily. So as you can see, there's a lot of usage here and lots of ways that you can help promote your program. So um, now let's talk about the kind of the demographics between Facebook and Instagram. So although they, although they are both social media sites, they do kind of have different demographics and people who primarily use them. So in Facebook, the average user is 40 to 41 years old versus Instagram, over half of the users are under 34 years old. So when promoting our program, if we're excluding faculty and staff, we're mostly looking at college students and most of them are going to be under 34 years old. So a lot of them do use Instagram and most people use Facebook, but for a little bit of different reasons. So as far as engagement goes, Facebook has 0.09% user engagement and Instagram has 1.6 user engagement per post. So user engagement is just like likes, comments, sharing, anything like that. Basically anytime people are interacting with your post, it's considered user engagement. So Facebook is largely informational. If you go on a businesses or company's Facebook page, you can see their phone numbers, their location, um, ratings, reviews, all kinds of stuff. So it's definitely a lot more informational versus Instagram. It's mostly people promoting their company, sharing about their company. And their point is more to engage with their followers or their participants or clients. And Instagram is also very image and video based. I mean, you can't post on Instagram without having an image. While Facebook, you can just post text or you can post images or videos. So why is social media important for your program? So first off, it's free advertising. It is free to make an account. And then kind of some of the apps that I'm gonna share with you later are also free. It is also accessible to everyone. So as long as your account is on public and you have an email account, um, people can see your account as long as 
They just have to go search your name and your account will pop up. And it is also a great, will, great way to build community and relationships between your participants, possible participants, and your staff. So I'm really talking about here is more of your staff having social media accounts, um, such as your group fitness instructors, personal trainers, because that help builds that community between them that can help promote the program and help keep that community, which will keep people coming back. So like I said, we're kind of talking about staff here. So why should your staff be on social media? It helps shows their expertise and their knowledge. So if they're a personal trainer and they're posting workouts, it helps people know that they actually know what they're talking about and they just didn't study for a certification. Um, and it also helps them, again, connect to potential clients or participants. Some people may not know about your program and social media is a great way to help promote that because they may love cycling, but if they have no clue that you have a cycling program, you're obviously not gonna have, they're obviously not gonna be, or just be a participant and stay connected with participants. So like I said, building that community is a really important aspect to help people coming back. And this is a great way to do that. And it does take minimal effort. All you have to do is like their post, maybe comment on it, they can comment on yours. And it's a great way to build a community. All right. So now we're gonna be talking about some of my top tips. These are kind of broad, but they're a great way or a great place to start. So first is to post consistently. Now you don't need to post seven days a week. That is a lot of work, but you can still try and post maybe two or three times a week. That's usually a good number to kind of start out with. And it's not even so much as posting a lot. It's more about posting consistently. So if you're only gonna post once a week, try and post once a week on a Monday. If you're gonna post twice a week, post twice a week on a Monday and a Thursday and so on. Just so that there is some pattern and your followers know what to expect, as well as it helps the algorithm so that way more people will see your post. Second, make sure to post what you wanna see. So if you're posting what you're genuinely interested in and what you like to see, people will most likely also be interested in it as well. And it will come off as more genuine and it will show through that you are interested in this topic and that you're extremely passionate about it. And then third, use your stories to help increase engagement. So if you don't know what stories are, they're basically like another type of post, but it's only there for 24 hours. So specifically, this is really popular on Instagram, but they are um, available on Facebook as well. But like I said, they're just not as popular. So on Instagram stories, you can they can ask you questions, you can do polls, they can answer questions. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do that all they have to do is click a button and that automatically helps increase your engagement with them. They're more likely to see your post and they're more likely, yes, they're more likely to see your post. You're more likely to see their post. So it's just a great way to boost engagement and help again, continue building that community between your participants. All right, so quick quote, don't use social media to impress people use it to impact people uh, by Dave Willis. And with that, we're kind of gonna go into a few questions to ask yourself before you post that can just help give you a guide on basically whether or not you should post it. So first is, does this post have meaning? So I know that this is kind of broad, but a big thing here is just to me, is just what is kind of the point behind this post? Are you doing it to help educate people? Are you doing it to maybe inspire people? What is the meaning? And then second, uh, does this post support my personal brand? And when I'm talking about personal brand, I don't mean maybe you have a business on the side or you're representing like for me, Texas Tech University. I mean, your personal brand starts as soon as you walk out the door in the morning and it's how you interact with people. It's how you talk to people and it's what people think of you and what they would say about you. Like, are they gonna say, oh yeah, she's a great person. She's super passionate. Or are they gonna say, yeah, it's fine. So as far as personal brand, make sure that your post reflects highly on you and that it's not gonna work on damaging your personal brand. And then third, is this valuable to my audience? So social media, a lot of this, we are posting to help, we are posting for likes, for comments, for that engagement. So with that being said, we want it to be valuable to our audience because if it is, they're more likely to comment, they're more likely to follow. So think about maybe what your audience is interested in, because if you're primarily, let's say you have a fitness page, but all of a sudden you start posting 
about fashion, they probably won't be that interested in it and it probably won't be valuable to them. <laughs> and then fourth, does this feel authentic? So this kind of goes with the, does it have meaning? What is the point behind it? Are you posting this because you genuinely love fitness and you want to share it with people? Or are you posting it just because you feel like you should or you just want to maybe look popular? What is it authentic that you want to share it with people? And then kind of going with that is, does it feel like spam? I'm sure we've all gotten spam before. It's not very fun. So if you're just posting to post, people are probably going to see through that and see that one, you didn't put that much effort into it and two, that you maybe don't really care about it that much. So just keep that in mind. Um, if it feels like spam, I would say, I know that I talked about being consistent, but if you are going to just put it off one day and, or if you're going to post on a Thursday and let's say you don't really know what you're going to post, it's better to just put it off a day and find something that you're genuinely interested in before you post it. All right, and can this be misunderstood? So this, this is a huge one in today's society. And again, it kind of goes back to reflecting your personal brand. You want to make sure that everything that you say is crystal clear. It can't be misinterpreted. It can't reflect poorly back on you. And that just comes from rereading your captions, rereading your comments, making sure that what you say is can be taken exactly how you intend it. And then lastly, this one's kind of all-encompassing. Why am I posting this? Are you posting this just because you want to quote unquote become famous and maybe get deals and possibly earn money out of it? Are you posting it because you love fitness or you love your program and you want to help share that with people and support other people who could be in your program? All right, so that's kind of the basics of social media, kind of the background behind it and why it's important in your program. So next we're gonna kind of go into some apps and websites that I personally like to use. There are a ton out there. I kind of like the amount of social media. There are apps you can search for forever, but these are kind of my top four that I tend to use. So first is Canva. Canva is by far my favorite one. You can do almost anything with this app. It's great for adding text, uh, making infographics, logos. I will say almost anything you wanna do with this website, you can. And then second is Visco. This is just used to edit photos. There are tons of apps out there, but this is just the one that I like to use. Third is Google Photos. So this is just a great way to store photos outside of your phone. If you're like me, you take lots of photos and videos and then your storage kind of um, adds up very quickly. And then last, we're gonna talk about Buffer and kind of um, planning posts. All right, so like I said, we're gonna start with Canva. So as you can see on the left, there are about templates for almost anything that you can think of. They have templates for um, resumes, logos, posters, as well as Instagram posts and Facebook posts, which is what I mostly use it for, but this is just a great re resource to have if you're a student, if you're a professional and you need help creating anything, this is a great place to start. And then on the right, they also have obviously the templates for Instagram and Facebook posts. So this is a great place to start because for some of them, all you have to do is change the, um, <laughs> sorry, I just saw the message. All you have to do is change the is change the photo and the text and then you're done. Or if you wanna get really creative, you can almost make an entirely new post out of a template. So this is just a great place to start, but I will give a little disclaimer. It can be a little bit complicated. It's definitely one that you have to kind of practice and get used to before jumping full force into because it can be kind of overwhelming. Oh, here we go. All right, so now we're gonna kind of go over a few of the features of Canva. So this is a post that I made right here. As you can see in the top left corner, you see templates. And then as you're even editing a photo um, infographic, you can still change your template and it shouldn't really affect your text that much. So that's just something to keep in mind. With these, you could scroll forever and you will never run out of templates. So you always have something new to work with. And then next you can see um, it has uploads. So you can upload images and videos here. Um, another great way to do this is you can also copy and paste from Google Photos, which we will kind of get to in a second. But this is a great way to add in your own images and videos. 
And then if you see right below the uploads button, there is also a photos button. So that is not your own images. Those are stock photos. So we're not really going to cover that. But if you do need any stock photos for something, um, they have them there. I just prefer to upload my own images and videos. All right, so next we have elements. So elements is really where you can kind of make all of your posts your own. Similar to the templates, they have tons and tons and tons of different things that you can add. Um, right here are all just kind of all the basic ones, add shapes, you can add in pictures, but they have, like I said, pretty much anything you can think of, you can just search up there in the top left. A few of them are premium, but I can almost guarantee that you can get by without paying for premium. I had to search for bacteria one time for a class and they had a little uh, doodle for it. So I really don't think you need to pay for premium. Like I said, this is a great way to really make all of your posts your own. And if you wanna go from one of those templates, you can really kind of switch it up here. All right, next is text. So again, I'm sure we all know what text is. They have a ton of different font combinations that you can use. And then you can just edit whatever text you want. You can also just add in some plain text with the heading, subheading, or the body text. And then you have the option to where you can actually change the font, the size, you can make it bold, italicize it, all of that fun stuff. But I will say all of their um, kind of preset text all look super nice together. So it just makes making a post super simple. And then quickly before we go on to background, so you can see the music and the videos um, kind of buttons on the left side. So those are very similar to the photos button. It's just stock music and stock videos. I really don't ever make videos with Canva, but if you are interested in it, that is where it can be found. But like I said, I don't really use it. Um, to my knowledge, you can't upload your own music in here. It's just the music they have already installed in the program. All right, now moving on to background. So obviously all of the templates already have their own background here, but you can change them super duper easily. Um, you can, they have a ton that you can pick from. And then a great thing about this is if you want to choose, like if you see in the top left, there's like the gray polka dots. If you want to choose that background, but you don't necessarily want it gray, you can change it to pretty much any color that you want to fit your post. And then again, similar to the elements, there's our tons that you can choose from and really make your post original. All right, and then a couple few other tools that you can use. Let me see if I can get a pointer here. All right, so like I said, up here, these are kind of all of the different um, fonts that you can use, the size, you can change the color as well as bold or italicize it. And then as well, if you go to more, you can lock things in place so that way you don't accidentally move it because I do that all of the time. And then you can add links to everything. You can make copies of everything. And then one tip that I will say, because I've made this mistake many, many times, is before you try and download something or export it somewhere else, click home and that kind of automatically saves it because I have tried to export something and I, it technically automatically saves, but sometimes it takes a little bit of time. But if you click this home button and then come back to it, it basically just forces it to save. All right, so now we will talk about Google Photos. So this is a great app, whether or not you have social media. So it's connected to your Gmail or Google account. And all you have to do is download the app. And then whenever you open up the app, it automatically uploads all of your photos from your phone or your camera roll to the app. And then once it's uploaded all of those, it has a little button that says, like, let's say you have 150 photos, it'll say 150 photos uploaded and ready to delete. So then you can click on that button and it allows it to delete all those photos from your phone, but you still have access to them through the app and online. And basically it just saves you a ton of space um, it's super easy to re-download them back to your phone. The only thing here is you access them through data or Wi-Fi. And then, like I said, with Canva, this is a great way to just get your photos onto your laptop. So that way you don't have to like worry about plugging in your phone to your laptop or your computer and the, or trying to email them to yourself. It's a super simple way. And then you can also just copy and paste your photos to um, Canva. All right, now we have Visco. So my roommate's cat, Millie, is our model for this one. Um, so this is just a photo editing app. 
Um, like I said, there are tons and tons and tons of them out there. You can even just use your iPhone filters for this one, but I just like this one. As you can see in kind of like the bottom left here, they have tons of filters that you can choose from. This app does have a paid version, but similar to Canva, there's not really, I haven't found a need to use the paid version. They have tons of um, filters that you can use to edit your photo. Oh no, there we go. And then as well as if you look down here in the bottom right, it has, um, you can see, you can crop it, change the exposure, change the colorings. There are a ton of things that you can do. And kind of similar to Canva, this is kind of one of those apps you just kind of have to mess with and figure out what you like for your post. And then what's great about this app as well is that you can copy basically the filters from one photo and paste them onto another photo just so everything on your feed looks really cohesive. Anna, I just want to let you know you've got about 10 minutes left as well. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so now we are going to talk about planning post. So this is something that you definitely don't have to do. I just find that it kind of takes the stress off of um, you for whenever you post. So you can do something super simple like down here in the bottom. You can just do like maybe what date you want to post it, as well as what you're going to post, what pictures or videos you're going to post, and then go ahead, write out your caption, and then maybe any other notes that you have. So this is a super easy way to do it. Um, but you also, like I said, you don't have to, but I prefer the app Buffer. Um, you can access it from your phone or computer, as you can see up here. So as you can see over here in the left, you kind of see my little account up here, and then you can click on photos and upload any of the photos that you would like, as well as you can go ahead and write out your caption here. So the only downside with this app is that one, you can't technically upload photos and videos at the same time. They all have to be all photos or all videos, but that's super easy to get around. If you maybe just put like the cover photo up at the front and then just remind yourself to upload the videos with it whenever you go to upload it. But it's super easy because then basically what it does is whenever it's time to post, it just copies everything to the clipboard in your phone. And all you have to do is paste it and then click post and you're done. So it's super easy and it's a great way just to kind of save some time and stress. All right, so a quick recap of everything. So Facebook and Instagram are definitely the most um, used social media apps, especially kind of with our generation and the college age generation, especially more so Instagram. Um, Facebook is definitely a lot more focused on being informational, while Instagram is a lot more about building community and engagement with your followers. And then kind of quickly, make sure that you always think about why you're actually posting stuff before you post. And make sure that you always post what you're genuinely interested in, because that will just come off as genuine to your followers, and they will just really appreciate it. And it'll um, most likely keep them from just scrolling past it because they'll actually care. And then the few apps that I shared with y'all are Canva, Google Photos, Visco, and Buffer. And like I said, with all of these, you really just kind of have to play around, see what you like, see what you don't like, and kind of mess with the features. Because I will say they are not the most user-friendly 24-7, but once you get the hang of them, um, it's pretty easy. And then a huge thank you to our sponsors. I know that this virtual conference is <laughs> a little bit different than last year, but without them, this couldn't have been possible. And then if y'all could all please scan this little um, QR code here, it'll just take you to a Google form. And if you would like um, the slides or the video recording of the um, presentation, I would be super happy to send it to you, as well as I'd just like y'all's emails for future reference in case we need to uh, collaborate on anything. Then I also put my LinkedIn up here in the top left corner and my Instagram and Facebook. It's at GFI Hannah. And then make sure that you follow the Nursery Region for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as my email is down here in the kind of middle right. And then other than that, if anyone has any questions or maybe any input that they would like, I would love to hear from you. Thank y'all so much.
if there aren't going to be any questions, I just wanted to add in here really quickly too. I want to say thank you to everybody for attending. Uh, we know it's been kind of weird having this virtual conference, but really happy you all were here. If you are interested, we do have a few more sessions to finish out the conference this afternoon as well. So if you want to hop on to any of those, feel free. But if not, we want to thank you, especially for really attending and supporting us as we get through this. So thank you. All right, so someone asked where I got my um, slides from. I got it from slidesgo.com, and it just gives you a bunch. Of, it's honestly similar to Canva as far as um, for PowerPoint slides. So it just gives you a ton of different formats that you can use, and you can go in and edit it from there.